Someone asked me about a uh, some scuttlebutt recently. There's a movie that came out about the end of the world, if you're not aware of it, an impact or one. Uh, about the Earth's poles shifting in some way that should be noted or has been discovered or has been discussed concerning water or climate change. Pole spin axis deviation uh, can drift 10 meters a century or one meter every decade or a tenth of a meter every year? A couple of centimeters each year? 10 centimeters? That works out to 1.6 kilometers in 16,000 years. Coincidentally, the, this is the spin axis deviation of the Earth's north and south poles. Now this deviation is total deviation over time. It could be just going back and forth and be pretty stable. In fact, it probably is, but each year, um, several centimeters are attributed to the change in Earth's mass distribution from ice melt. That works out to one mile every 16,000 years, which is almost exactly 1.6 kilometers <laughs> every 16,000 years. It's about the same amount that normally happens due to the Earth's crust getting a little bit out of alignment. It's uh, not moving completely straight, and uh, there's movement of magma under the Earth, which is much more enormous than the ice shelves. But yes, us causing a change in the environment will shift, not remove the ice, but shift the ice to thaw and freeze in different locations, and it will cause deviations. And this works out to, if it was going in a straight line, which it doesn't, it goes back and forth and wobbles, it doesn't really change its position much. But a cumulative effect of a whole mile in 16,000 years, which is literally only a couple of percentage points different than what it's already doing without us doing this. So I'd like to thank uh, only one scientific thing. You know, Scientific American obviously wouldn't leave that part out that that's already happening anyway and that that's literally the measured effects we find anyway. And This is an estimate on us being here doing shit. And this is an estimate on where we're seeing the melt happen now and the freeze and thaw factor happening. Only one website allowed you to find out that this is literally identical to what already happens. Now this means it's either doubling it or canceling it out. <laughs> um, and they're not even sure what the amount is, so they said several centimeters, but it works out to 10 centimeters a year. And several centimeters means more than one centimeter, less than 10, because then they would just say 10. If they were, maybe they would have said five. Maybe they say, literally, I, we don't know how many centimeters. Th then why, why is this a news story? Does anything else cause this? Well, yeah, lava, volcanoes, tectonic plate activity. Your mom. Due to the Earth's inner core acting like a big freaking gyroscope with, you know, fudge ripple coating on it, and maybe also the moon possibly, you know, acting as a gyro stabilizer, which is in question this year because people want to question that for some reason as well. I'm, I'm, I'm open, open to that idea. Let's find out. And due to the fact that the Earth-Moon system may have been caused by an impact of the Moon a long time ago, and at least two or three times we've been hit by something big enough to just flatten all life on the planet just about, a true polar wander or geographical pole change will deviate by a degree every thousand years or a million years. It's not completely stable, but it's a degree. And then go right back. For a cumulative effect over the last 130 million years, of five degrees of difference that may have also recorrected itself. That's cumulative degree changes total. But the previous 130 million years may have been five degrees the other direction. And some people say, well, but it's moving east. The North Pole is moving east is a bit of a thing for you to explain. Before we had a moon, or not, depending on whether or not they want to consider this an issue, there may have occurred twice that the Earth be tilted at 55 degrees. Now, the normal degree tilt is 23.4 degrees. Okay, multiply that by 2. 
That's uh, so the carry the five divide by zero. That's 46, 47 degrees, and there was 55 degrees of. So it may have wobbled back and forth twice, and then stabilized because it's been stable, a really ridiculously stable. Apparent polar wander. The magnetic pole going towards North Pole currently. The magnetic field, that's, that's something people bring up. These all get confused with the axial tilt and the magnetic field that's currently going towards the North Pole. Now, I'm going to repeat that. Well, it's moving at breakneck speed so that the magnetic pole of the Earth is actually going to and slowing down now at the North Pole and staying there. It deviated and went back. Literally, it's becoming more stable. So, fear mongers. Other things, I'm not saying confused here as a joke here. I mean, it, people really do get confused about it. People who want you confused about it won't let you look up what it's called. Links below in the description. There's also a 6,800 day or something like that uh, deviation pattern as well. That's uh, something that's understood. It follows the moon's behavior because it's the moon pulling on the earth and causing a slight deviation that can be attributed to its deviation because it's not completely mechanically stable. But it's a cycle and it happens all the time. There's a 435 day cyclic polar motion as a <clears throat> Earth's crustal year at each pole, or more accurately, the core of the Earth moving at a slightly different rate than the outside. It's moving slightly faster, but there's this weird crustal shift that causes a deviation rotational axis where the physical North Pole is that you can actually measure today. So, of course, it must be terrifying now that we're aware of it. And it's massive deviation of a certain number of milli-arc seconds because scientists don't want to tell you it's 30 feet to 300 feet depending on which one does the measurement. If you do it at the South Pole, it's different because the South Pole is slightly more mass towards the from the equator down to the South Pole. So there's a different deviation. The North Pole has a different deviation. One of them is around 30 feet. And the other one can be up to 300 feet depending on which paper you read. But they all put it in milli-arc seconds because they don't want to admit that it's this dinky-ass thing less than the size of your house or maybe as big as a football field, hypothetically. But what year was that, sir? Well, look at the graph. It says milli-arc seconds. This is when we hold you down and slap you and make you say feet. Or meters. You know, 10 meters to 100 meters. That's the deviation. So this is nano deviation. <laughs> so anyway, next. There's also precision, not procession. The axis of rotation moves, pointing to a new North Pole star every 25,800 years or something like that. It's a rounded off number. I'm going to use a rounded off number because we haven't been here measuring this very well, but that's long enough. That's just in the period of time where humans might have experienced this. We just don't have any record of it. That's double the duration of time that we know of any form of recorded human history that's interpretable, that's useful, until we find the next Stonehenge and like, oh, there it is. You know how easy it is to set up a backyard observatory if it's on rocks that are part of the... I mean, there are there is going to be movement on Earth, but you can get north and south pretty well lined up and... Oh, yeah, you could have a lot of deviation over that time. Yeah, really serious deviation. Don't believe me? Go visit freaking San Andreas. Go visit anywhere that had an earthquake recently. Holy shit. By the way, by the way let's just call it 2020 syndrome. That's the shit year. Million years of uh, continental drift might affect this. Circulation of the mantle, the magma. And continents make different parts of the Earth's crust move in different directions at different speeds. And this can cause deviation of the planet and also make it impossible for you to get a straight answer out of any of this. We've only had satellites up really paying attention to this for my lifespan. A little longer than my lifespan, yeah. There's an irregular 450,000 year apart geomagnetic reversal that takes about 7,000 years. And you know what's happening when you start seeing extra north and south poles show up. Meanwhile, everybody who isn't aware of this, depending on the iron deposits in your area, you're going to have a weird north pole thing. There's been 183 of them at irregular timings over the last 83 million years. There's no reason to assume we're overdue or we've just pen past one. We can find out when these happen by just, you know, 
looking at rocks and seeing that the magnetic fields are the wrong direction. And, and the thing is, they're all moving around. As best we know, it doesn't really have any real pattern to it. Then there's trepidation. From 800 AD to 1500 AD, and actually based on a storytelling behavior from a long time ago, there was a false astronomy theory about the oscillation of the precession of the equinoxes that took even longer. And it was found after they got off their dead asses and looked outside and made observations for less than five years that it was literally bullshit. So let's review. There's a literally a dozen different things here that actually affect which way is north and what you call north, whether it's the magnetic field north, whether it's the part of the sky that always is pointed at it being north, whether or not you measure down to 30 stinking feet and won't say it's 30 stinking feet, you little bastards, and um, a bunch of other things. Oh, and there has been, you know, there's two times that the Earth's tilt could have been heavily modified. Now, I'm not saying anything about an impactor that killed off a shit ton of dinosaurs, but 65 million years ago, an event... That, I don't think that qualifies as something that's going to happen any day now because somebody needs to sell, you know, bumper stickers. So anyway, the person brought this up um, as a subject matter because it was coming from reliable sources, a.k.a. science, of them predicting that our effect on this planet would have exactly the same effect as the planet does any fucking way because it takes 16,000 years to move Almost exactly the same thing as one damn mile of deviation because of the re reshuffling of the ice or reshuffling of the mantle. You know, 16,000 years for a mile, that's almost... Oh yeah, there was an ice age once. I didn't mention that. Did I waste everybody's time for 12 minutes and 30 seconds? Am I a big bastard? I'll put it at the top of the, of the description of the video. Yeah, just like the Ice Ages could do it, uh, we could do the polar opposite of it, pun intended, and have almost exactly the same effect. Or maybe cancel it out because it's the same period of time, same distance, same... Bad scientist. Anyway, um, then only one of the pages actually mentioned that this is already happening due to something else. It's like, maybe they're just wrong? Well, we've measured this. Really? Did you take into account something you already knew about that's already happening? Is it going the same direction? Opposite direction? Is it a different dimension? Geeks on crack. So anyway, due to the Earth's inner core, our moon, and your mom, the gyroscopic stability of the planet doesn't seem to be getting wobbled, dilted, or dorked up at all. Just make sure she keeps eating enough donuts. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck.